<sighs> is it Thursday already? Before we start, I have a request for the people who genuinely enjoy this show. In the comments below, could you please give detailed explanations as to what you think is good about it? Please be as thorough as possible. Give lots of examples, because I am so curious as to how you came to this conclusion. Thank you. This episode starts with a magician named... The Great Donny Blaze! What? Donny Blaze! Oh, okay, never mind. Whew. Donny Blaze is a terrible magician and people hate his shows. However, he's able to reclaim the audience by pulling out a sling ring to create portals. How did he get this, you might be wondering. Apparently, he trained for a couple of days to become a sorcerer with Wong, and he just took the sling ring with him after getting kicked out for throwing a party. I am not making this up. This is actually his origin story. Former student of the mystic arts, but he was kicked out after a week when he summoned three kegs and his former fraternity brother, Kai Dog, to Kamataj. And after doing some research, it seems that this character was completely made up for the show and is not from the comics whatsoever. So it makes sense why his name name is so confusing. Our genius writers had no idea that there was already a Johnny Blaze. Donny Blaze's new signature trick is to just send random members of the audience through a portal to a random destination, and then he just leaves them there. And people clap for some reason. I guess they love this. The portal apparently sends this drunk girl to Wong, but actually it doesn't because apparently she went to some demon dimension where she made a deal with a demon and then ended up in Wong's room after browning out. Her words, not mine. So I guess demons can also just make sling ring portals? Drunk Girl then spoils the Sopranos episode that Wong was about to watch, so he swears revenge on Donnie for causing this to happen. You just ruined it. I cried for three days. Donnie Place is going to pay for this. Okay. Well, at least it seems like we'll get some backstory as to why Wong was late to Blonsky's trial earlier. I might even have to take back my earlier criticism for thinking there was no reason. Just kidding, there's still no reason for that. These drunk girl shenanigans are not a flashback, they are in the present. You had me for a second there, show. I almost thought you had a little competence in you. Hmm, you look happy. No, I don't. I guess you saw that Wong is back. God, everybody loves Wong. It's That's like not true. Giving the show Twitter armor for a week. That is also a lie. Come on, let's be real. Wong is only here because he's cheap. Jennifer's dad shows up to help boost her house's security after the wrecking crew attack. With how nice her dad is, it's unclear why she hates men so much, but Jennifer insists that she's fine because she's a Hulk. During their talk, Jennifer confirms that she never called the police because they would never catch those guys. You didn't call them? Are you serious, Jen? I was a prosecutor long enough to know that they're not going to catch these guys. Well, if you just let them run away, then yeah, that might make it a little difficult. You also saw three of their faces, and their getaway van was just across the street from you, which they sat in without moving to talk for several minutes. You could have easily gotten them detained if you just didn't half-ass it, but again... Stupid people create stupid problems. That might as well be the theme for this show. Later, Jennifer decides to make herself a dating account. Oh, and her dating life will be the side story for this episode. How did you come up with the name She-Hulk? You ding-dongs oh, dubbed me that. Funny. Jennifer. You were in that interview. Why are you getting offended by that question? Suddenly, Wong appears. He explains Donnie's origin and seeks Jennifer's legal help to stop him from creating more portals. Why is he coming to Jennifer when he doesn't understand American law? Who knows? Why doesn't he just deal with Donnie himself since he doesn't respect American law anyway? You realize that you've just admitted to facilitating a prisoner escape, which is a crime. I must depart. Because the writers have made Jennifer a remarkably uninteresting character, and now they need to grasp at straws in order to get her involved in interesting conflicts. But instead of going after Donnie for endangering lives by sending women to demon realms, or for stealing valuable property from Wong, Jennifer asks if he signed an NDA or a non-compete. You are a shit lawyer. Jennifer then goes to hang out with Bestie at a restaurant. Again, while there, they get approached by a man who offers to buy them drinks. He seems a little overconfident, so naturally they tell him off and make fun of him after he leaves. Sorry, I'm sad and lonely. Jen. Gee, I wonder why. Jennifer and Wong then confront Donnie and threaten him with a cease and desist if he continues to make portals. But like, what the fuck are we doing here? Wong doesn't have a copyright over making portals. It's not even clear if Wong knows what that word means. But it doesn't matter because Donnie almost killed a woman and she needed to make a deal with a demon to save her own life. 
go after him for attempted second degree murder, or at the very least, go after him for theft because he stole a sling ring. If the show is trying to suggest that he didn't steal it, and Wong just let him keep it, then Wong is a dumbass. But the second degree murder charge still applies. This show is so shit, it's unbelievable. Jennifer then goes on a cartoonishly bad date, and that's the whole scene, so moving on. We cut to the trial, and it is just so painfully stupid. Jennifer states that Donnie is guilty of gross negligence. And yes, that's actually reasonable. But then the judge says this. I must say, Counselor, I am hard-pressed to believe that a magic trick could constitute gross negligence. Moron, it's not a magic trick. He made a portal to a demon realm. The judge asks for witnesses to corroborate Jennifer's claim. <sighs> so Wong portals the drunk girl from earlier to the courtroom, and she is arriving here from another party, so she is still drunk. She had no idea that this was going to happen, and Jennifer didn't inform her ahead of time that they were going to use her as a witness. And this is just not how any of this works. Do I even need to explain this? You contact your witnesses ahead of time to make sure that they are ready and available. You don't just warp reality to pluck them from wherever at a moment's notice. Why is everyone here so stupid? Surely enough, Drunk Girl explains how she was sent to the demon realm and almost died, but she is a drunken idiot, so no one takes her seriously. All Wong has to do is go, this is where he sent her, and to show everyone the horrible demon realm firsthand. Okay, this was a mistake. Well, no shit. Wait, why is she sitting with them now? And because the judge is an idiot, she allows Donnie to endanger more lives by practicing his magic for another few weeks until she reaches her decision. Wong jokingly asks if he could send Donnie to the mirror dimension. He's obviously saying something extreme for the sake of a laugh, but that begs the question. Why are you going through all this legal trouble in the first place? Are you even an American citizen? After the trial, Jennifer is in her house at night, when she decides to make a dating profile for She-Hulk, since normal Jennifer Walters is too rancid of a person to get any decent dates of her own. At least they're somewhat self-aware. Maybe they're trying to set up an arc here, who knows. It's worth pointing out as well that Jennifer's lock screen is a picture of Captain America's butt. She is everything that she claims to hate about men. She then takes some horrific looking selfies as She-Hulk, and we're somehow expected to believe that this will get her more matches than this. Okay, if you say so. We then cut to a montage of She-Hulk going on a series of more bad dates. So apparently it doesn't matter that she's She-Hulk. Her dates are bad anyway. So what is the point then? Who knows? God, you're just so powerful. What a specimen. Did you just call me a specimen? That was obviously a compliment. People say it all the time to men and women, mainly to people who are particularly athletic or remarkable in some other way. Get over yourself. Is there anything worse than dating in your 30s? Yes. Watching your TV show. But then the montage ends with her meeting a seemingly good match. And by good match, I don't mean that they have chemistry. I mean that he is hot and only wants to listen to her talk. I hate talking about myself. Tell me about you. Oh. We then cut back to Donnie while he's doing another portal show. Except his next victim doesn't want to walk through his hell portal, which is understandable. I don't even really know how this counts as a trick in the first place. Why would anyone want to watch their friend get sent to a random place in the universe with no way to return? But since that isn't working anyway, Donnie instead summons a dove with his ring. Not sure why the audience finds this so entertaining. It's a pretty standard CGI egg. $25 million an episode, and you guys couldn't just put a real egg in this woman's hand? But surprise, the egg hatches and a horrible goblin creature comes out. <laughs> What the fuck? Thankfully, Donnie sends both it and the dove straight to hell. Unfortunately, he's an idiot and doesn't close the portal, so the creature just crawls back. And it brings hundreds of his friends as well. Chaos ensues, so Donnie portals to Wong's room to beg him for help. And Wong's just laying there watching TV. Isn't that funny? Bet you didn't expect it. Odd that anyone can just portal to the Sorcerer Supreme's house just like that. You'd think he'd have a defense for that sort of thing, but whatever. Wong steps in to save the day, but tells Donnie to call his lawyer. Initially, it seemed like he said this because he knew that this incident would be good leverage for the trial. But no, he's actually calling Jennifer for help since apparently the Sorcerer Supreme can't handle a couple of bat goblins by himself. Meanwhile, Jennifer is on her date when the calls start coming in. Date guy spills wine on his shirt, so he takes it off and goes to... Uh, please don't sniff that. 
Okay, thank you. Wong interrupts the date with an intrusive portal. Kind of a dick move. Why not get help from Doctor Strange, or the Avengers, or any of the hundreds of sorcerers you know? Better yet, why not just deal with this yourself? Because this problem should be beneath you. Well, because it's She-Hulk's show, so she just arbitrarily needs to be there. Jennifer's big contribution to this fight is to just catch all the goblin creatures and throw them through another portal. And for some reason, they don't come back this time. This is a moronic plan, because it would take hours to grab all these slimy little things one by one to throw away. Wong, why don't you just clone yourself a bunch of times like Steven did, and get this over with in an instant? Oh, you can just suck them all through. Well, why didn't you do that earlier? In any case, the day is saved. No thanks to She-Hulk. And Jennifer returns to perform Snoo Snoo with the date guy. Except now, she looks even more disgusting than she usually does. Why? Why does any of this exist? Next day, Date Guy sees Jennifer in her human form and immediately bails. Not quite sure what the show is trying to say with that. Are we supposed to believe that human Jennifer is just as off-putting as the Bat Goblins? Was the date just that awful? Or maybe it's that listening to Jennifer for more than one night is too much to handle. Who's to say? Either way, he's gone. Suddenly, some other guy appears to inform Jennifer that Titania is suing her. Remember Titania? No? Well, she's back, and she's suing Jennifer because apparently she trademarked the name She-Hulk before Jennifer did. This sends Jennifer into a tizzy, but why does she care that much about a name she hates? Tune in next week to find out. Kind of a bummer way to end this episode. I bet there's a fun tag. I bet there's not, and I'm right. The end credit scene is just Wong and Drunk Girl talking about drinks they like for a really long time. Seriously, it's just a full minute of them talking about drinks. There's no joke, there's no zany visual, they just sit there and talk. Blue carousel? No. What's blue carousel? I don't know, it's blue. Uh. Manhattan? Yep, Manhattan Ave. Slow gin? Fizz? Nope. Let's do a little hypothetical. If I was approached by Marvel to fix this mess, my answer would be the same as the episode prior. Just throw it all in the trash and start over. The writers don't know how law works. They don't know how comics work. They don't know how men or women work. So I have to ask, what do they know? And why were they hired for this job? Let's talk about Donnie Blaze. First of all, change that name. Secondly, this character and the conflict he brings could have been resolved in minutes, had Wong just handled it himself and taken the ring back. But instead, he goes to Jennifer. And instead of just having a simple open and shut case because he almost killed someone, everyone just catches a horrible case of donkey brains, making the entire situation far more complicated than it needs to be. Why do they do this? Why do they keep dragging out and overcomplicating these simple problems? Well, because the episode needs to be 30 minutes long. Most of the time. And because the writers are just... not smart. Now let's talk about Jennifer's dating life. She drags herself into meeting all these lame men that are clearly not good matches. Not only does this come across as being desperate and with low standards, but she also fails to recognize that she is just as unappealing as they are. Instead of trying to find someone with similar interests, humor, or chemistry, she doesn't put any effort in at all. She just sits there and waits for all of them to impress her, then goes for the most docile piece of meat from the bunch that doesn't talk. A trophy, in other words. There's actually a good setup for an arc here, where Jennifer is lonely because she doesn't realize that her toxic personality is off-putting, so she'll gradually grow and change over time to become someone worthy of love. But I highly doubt that's where this show is going. It's more likely that Jennifer will never change, and instead will just wait around for an even more docile bootlicker to appear. Time will tell. So far, this show is off to an abominable start. But who knows, maybe episode 5 will turn it all around. Who am I kidding? I'm so worried about Daredevil.